Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Mac. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links to everything discussed can be found in the description below, so let's get on with it. This week, the anniversary sale comes to an end. Your Prowler questions are answered, plus a 2.6 release update. I would just like to give a big shout out to BritizenCon. If you are interested in a Star Citizen UK fan event where you can meet backers, content creators and devs all talking Star Citizen, head over to BritizenCon.uk to find all the information you need. It is currently being crowdfunded on Indiegogo. This is where you can get your tickets or if you're feeling generous, help get it funded regardless. I have both the web links in the description below and I hope to see you there. So just to keep you all up to date regarding 2.6, it has been pushed back slightly. Here are the new dates. I'll put them on the screen. Remember, these are not a promise. They are just an expected date. The Avocado or Evocotti group are expected to receive it between the 28th and the 30th. The normal PTU range is now the 1st to the 7th, but the live release date has not changed yet. It's still expected for the 8th. I must say it will come when it's ready, as they keep saying. This is a guide to show the expected internal schedule, not an actual release date. I will do a more in-depth video on a weekly basis as this changes to keep you all updated. So do subscribe so you don't miss out. So this week's Around the Verse came from Frankfurt. We kicked off with the weapons team uh, talking about the missiles, how they're getting them polished and optimised, plus adding some new ones for 2.6. The FPS weapons team are working on a new manufacturer, which is Castac Arms. We saw the first set of new concepts and they're going into white box meshes for these. We've got the Raider 50 cal handgun. The assault rifle, a sniper rifle as well, which is collapsible. They do look very cool. They kind of look like the Drake version of weapons. Very piratey. From there, we spoke about the multi-tool. Now, this is made by Greycat, who also make the little buggy. It is about the size of a pistol, and it's more of a power tool, so you can swap out the modules on the front. Current state, they have two modules. The first one is a cutting laser or lance to cut through thin metal or open containers. The second is a welding tool to patch up damage or repair objects. There will be more modules coming later, they didn't specify what, but they also want to put a mounted display on it, which they said is coming soon. After that, they spoke about the grenade. So we have the Mark IV grenade, which is a bearing grenade. This is your typical frag grenade coming to 2.6. Later in the Persistent Universe and Star Marine, we'll have these other ones. We've got a Radar.net, a DS-12, an EPS, a PM-3 and a CR-7, which are incendiary cluster emp and radio distortion some pretty cool grenades there but we've only seen bearings manu i'm sure other manufacturers will create their own designs after that they spoke about level design uh, the modularity system they have for outposts is coming together well plus they are working on space stations we got to see a little cargo depot there very cool they are focused on usables and character interactions for both player and ai so interacting with the environment not just the player but the ambient ai as well they're also expanding on creating new ecosystems and we saw a few videos during this point where we saw a video of a mining pit ecosystem for Hurston and improved procedural object scattering for ground cover plus improved cloud layer as well. All looking pretty cool. In AI they are working hard on the subsumption system, getting additional behaviours plus pushing combat further. They said they hope to have something to show for next update from Frankfurt which will be in about a month's time. Most valuable post this week went to Zeron for his Vengeance of the Damned cinematic, which he said that there was about 80 people working on it. I'll put the link below in the description. Definitely worth watching. And then the behind the scenes this week was looking at Star Marine. Obviously, we saw it for the live stream. Todd Pappy just talked about how it came from Ilphonic to now. They've had a lot of adjustments to do because of Ilphonics didn't put it up to the level they wanted it. Star Marine is meant to be the precursor to the Persistent Universe, just like Arena Commander is for Flight. It's a building block. Current 2.5 is very basic. 2.6 will have more built up. So you've got things like vaulting, mantling, cover, grenades, melee, just to name a few. There's a lot more. In the future, they will be adding more gadgets. The breathing and stamina system will be further fleshed out as well. In terms of recoil, they say they want to get animation more involved. You've got body, facial, and then procedural. So this will so this will differ depending on the type of recoil or your, your, your whatever weapon you're using. And they also said that they want to get it so that the animations feel and look right. He also mentioned about the two different throw modes for grenades. You've got underarm and overarm. These are selectable depending on whether you are looking above or below the center line of the screen. They want to sort of expose it to be more customizable so you can hopefully adjust how far up you need to be looking for an overarm compared to how far down you need to look. They will work on that, see how it feels. You can cook grenades as well, so be careful. Apparently they've got a large blast radius. 
We also got to see a little early evening race in Ellis. I'm not sure if this means that they've got procedural planet set up for Ellis system. We'll have to wait and see, but it looks very nice anyway. So they did a little deep dive on the levels and modes of Star Marine and how they sort of flesh them out. They start with an idea and then flesh it into white box and then they start play testing it for their straight lines, the choke points, all the metrics, etc. This minimizes the rework later on, plus gets balance and fun into the game as early as possible. Art and narrative then take a look at it and start treating the spaces to help with design and making it feel real. Afterwards, the map begins to look quite realistic. They have visual boards for the levels as well to give feedback on what needs to change where. Some really cool concepts as well. And then the last polish is material reads and lighting. They currently have a medium and light armor for both the, the marines and the slavers. This is the first time we will see them. They will also be used in the PU as well, not just Star Marine. The Marines is very industrial, sort of bulky but streamlined. They do want our feedback as well. They say it's a community-backed product. They can't do it without us, so please participate. Anyway, that was Around the Verse. Let's delve further into it in Reverse the Verse. So the first chap we spoke to in Reverse the Verse is a, a guy called David, who is a weapons artist. He works with a team of four. They do the FPS and the ship weapons, plus tools like the multi-tool. They have reworked all the weapons for 2.6 and added the PBR textures, plus made them more akin to their manufacturer's styles. Claws and Werner are now green, and the Kastak arms is sort of a black and red, which looks a little more piratey. They use also a level of details as well for weapons, so if you can get closer to the gun, you'll begin, it'll begin to look better. It's not too aggressive, so things aren't going to pop in when you start getting closer to someone holding a gun. He says the first LOD will disappear at about 3 to 4 metres, but you cannot tell the difference. There will be a variety of sights. They have an attachment system which allows you to change scopes, lasers, grenade launchers, all sorts of stuff. Weapons will also have damage and wear states as well, so sort of wear and dirt will appear on your weapon over time, which is just awesome. Someone asked about a flamethrower. He said it wouldn't work in space, so that's probably a no-go. Uh, also, in terms of alien weapons, what are there? And they say the Vandal have had their first weapon concepts. They didn't show us anything, unfortunately, but I think they've got two weapons already. Now, in terms of heavy or explosive FPS weapons, they are working on a railgun, which is in the final stages now. I think we have seen this before. I'll see if I can find an, Im an image of it. And from concept to sort of finish, he says that the uh, the multi-tool took about three weeks to integrate into the engine, but well, from there, the, and everyone else starts working on it and bringing it into a more standardized item. They will be adding modules for the multi-tool in the future, as mentioned. They have had an idea about making it into a weapon, but nothing confirmed. So we'll have to wait and see. The next guest was Todd Pappy, who is the design director. And he started off by just explaining that him and Chris and everyone knows that Star Marine is not to the level they want it to be yet. It's missing the stamina. It's also missing some technical, uh, some tactical elements, sorry, which will make it just feel much better. Current way to only punish the player is maybe adjust the spawn time. So maybe how in waves or maybe extend it to, to wait longer, or even fully remove it based on, and have it based on revives. All of these are missing as well at the moment, so they've got to be iterated on. One of the questions he was asked was, are there any areas that are destructible other than glass? And he says that there, there is going to be, but they have not got decompression in yet. They've got the rooms and atmosphere working, so it'll just be a, t a bit of time before they implement it. After 2.6, stamina and oxygen will be getting worked on, so that shouldn't take too long. Next question is, can we fight with our fists? And they say they have done a melee design. It's not quite right, but it's just currently like a simple punch and dodge so far, but that will get worked on also. Is there a plan for capture the flag mode or bomb mode for Star Marine? And he says there will be other modes coming. They want to also do a mode of um, like a mixture between Arena Commander and Star Marine. So you go to your ship, you, you, you maybe have to land on another ship, take it out, an FPS fight in between. Maybe there's a derelict ship that you need to get parts to fix your ship up with. Nothing concrete yet, but they are discussing it. Someone else asked a good question, which is, is there going to be a class-based gameplay? Like we see in Battlefield, where you have medic, sniper, heavy, or support, sorry, and so on and so forth. And he says, once gadgets are in, it's kind of you outfitting your own team and deciding who takes what to play what role, rather than choosing a specific class with a set of weapons. So you, you will be able to play as a medic, but it'll be up to you to determine, or be up to you and your teammates to determine who does what. Next question was, will EMP grenades affect energy weapons and HUDs? And he says the goal is yes, as well as environments. Can humans use Vandal weapons? They say it's to be determined. There are two Vandal weapons right now, 
and the plan is to currently not allow humans to use them, but it may change in the future. It's mainly down to metrics. The Vanduul are just so much bigger than a human, so it looks ridiculous. Next question is permadeath and star marine. Is there going to be such a thing? And he says not right now, but they have talked about it. Once revive is in, then they can sort of make life matter more. Right now, it's just too punishing with all the glitches in the current in the current build. So you know, like maybe not seeing someone on your radar when they should be there. Until that's all sorted, they're not going to have permadeath. Question after that is: Will there be a free for all area where you can take your time and explore with no score? And he says right now it's just elimination. You could play it alone, but I'm pretty sure like when it comes to me showing off the, the maps in Star Marine, there'll be a time limit that I have to do it in, which looks like seven minutes, but we can always just restart, can't we? Anyway, second to last question, is there going to be a friendly fire mode? So can you shoot your own friends? And he says, first of all, they need to, to figure out how to kick people for grieving. They need a, a grenade icon as well. They need a few bits just to get it ready so it'll work properly before they implement uh, friendly fire. But once they get those in, I'll flick the switch and there you go. So final question, what happened to the original maps for Star Marine? Will we ever see Gold Horizon? And he says, we won't be seeing it in the way it was previously built. It doesn't fit the modular system, so it needs a lot of rework. It will not be the same from what we have seen before, but there may be things that, are, you know, there may be a similar map like it. Anyway, that was Reverse the Verse, guys. Let me know your thoughts. So we had the first Esperia Prowler Q&A post Basically answering the questions that we have regarding the Prowler. First question being, will the Prowler's grav levs act similar to the Dragonfly, turning it into a ground vehicle of sorts? And they said, while the Prowler is not strictly a ground vehicle, the grav levs plates will allow for a similar mode of traversing planetary or very large services. It will also improve the maneuverability, giving it a slight better traction for both space and in atmosphere. Second question is, can we expect the same level of stealth from the Esperia model compared to the original Prowler? Does the reproduction differ in performance in any way? And they say that firstly, the ergonomics and fittings were changed to allow humans to control the ship. Secondly, much of the avionics and some materials were updated to match the current technical standards. Originally, the Prowler was created quite a few centuries ago, so things have advanced since then. They haven't completely decided yet whether there will be zero differences between the two, but it's very possible that slight deviations in the signature, durability and other factors will, will happen. So next question, why buy the Prowler over the Hoplite or the Redeemer? And they specify that the Prowler is built for stealth deployment and emergency extractions. Each ship will have its strengths and weaknesses and will depend on your playstyle. The Prowler is a very dedicated personal carrier for its size compared to the other two. It will also have the handling edge, whereas the Redeemer and the Hoplite are more considered for ship-to-ship -ship combat, being a gunship and fighter. So next question, it says that the Prowler is fast. What is the speed of the Prowler compared to the other ships? They say the low acceleration rates with the high SEM speed will help it to stay stealthy, but you can boost for exceptional acceleration when stealth is no longer concerned. Next question, will the Prowler be modular, or is it solely for dropping and boarding? Now they say that like every ship, you can swap out areas like avionics, thrusters, power plants, weapons, so on and so forth. However, the Tavaran did design it to be a dedicated armoured personnel carrier or dropship first and foremost. Some ships are very modular, whereas others are specialised. It's all just part and parcel of Star Citizen. Question after that, what type of travel range will the Prowler have? They say it's a short-range craft, more akin to a landing craft, so think of the beach invasions. It's meant for assaulting and boarding, not long-duration or long-distance patrol, but it can be fitted with a jump drive and is capable of quantum travel, but it is designed to operate alongside a fleet. So, will the Prowler have room or racks to store extra weapons, ammunition or explosives for the boarders? And they say absolutely. They say with the Prowler it is understood that in many cases the troops may need different equipment depending on the job. There is additional space for infantry gear to expand your options or maybe just expand your ammo supply. Next question, how powerful are the scanner's sensors on the Prowler? Can we replace the top turret with a scanning array similar to the Sentinel? And they say the top turret is piped for power and weapons but not sophisticated scanners or data lines. The Tavaran use Prowlers to take objectives. Plus, scanners can probably be quite noisy and would interfere with the stealth ability. Next question, can players use weapons like the sniper rifle from the Prowler? And they say, indeed, they can. And then the final question for part one is, is it possible to fit a Dragonfly inside the Prowler? They say it's not fully determined yet. They would advise against expecting it, but they say the interior is still subject to further implementation. Anyway, I hope that's cleared up some of your questions. Let's move on to the next post. So jumping straight into the Prowler Q&A Part 2, 
will the 2.6 loaner be a hoplite? Yes, they said they will assign the hoplite as a loaner for anyone who has purchased the prowler. Second question is, what is meant by its wide variety of defensive countermeasures at the ready? And they say it's meant that the prowler will have a full range of countermeasures, which includes flares, chaff and decoys. Third question, if the power or shields fail with when the air shields are in use, will it cause decompression? And they say, yes, losing your air shields while in space will have the same effect as a hull decompression. The cockpit, however, is fully sealed and can be flown despite damage to the barracks area. Does it have a bed or a toilet? Now, they say it currently doesn't, but they are still configuring the interior. There is a ready room behind the cockpit, which could be used for this purpose, but it's maybe better to be saved for an area to equip armor and get ready. Next question, can the grav levs be reversed to attach to a ship? So kind of act like a magnet. They say they are still developing the systems needed for ship boarding, but the intent is the prowler will be a key boarding ship. They may use this technique, but they don't want to promise until the exact details for boarding system is further fleshed out. Question after that is, will we see the one-way glass on other ships? And they say they are treating the glass as an exclusive to Taveran ships for the time being. It is part of the hull rather than an individual component, but that doesn't mean that they, they will be the only ship using it. Next question, does it have docking capabilities? And they say ship-to-ship -ship docking, no it doesn't. Any more details regarding the phalanx shield? And they explain that the Tavarian style flank shield is intended to be on the high end of rewarding skill in shield management, but be even more skill reliant than the normal shields. It's advisable having a dedicated crewman working the shields, that's when you'll get the most out of it. So second to last question, will it ever be possible for boarders inside the prowler to EVA before getting to the capital ship and maintaining velocity? Now they spoke to John Pritchett, who is the physics guy, and he says that the current EVA friction is a bug. So when you jump out of your ship and you come to a stop, that is a bug. Obviously, this is not realistic to, to physics in space. So it will be addressed at some point. Boarding a ship this way does not mean it will be easy. They are interested themselves to see the good ways of boarding ships and under what conditions. So it's still being worked on. Final question. Does the UEE use any of the Tavarian themed ships officially? And they say that the UEE dropships are generally provided by the contractors which are with Aegis or Anvil, plus other suppliers of equipment. That's not to say that the Prowler is not utilised in training purposes and for special operations. It is not used on a massive scale, though. So all week long since the anniversary livestream, there has been a sale for each manufacturer, and yesterday was the grand finale where you could pick up any of the previous ships offered. It was presented in a great series of little videos called Galactic Tour. Do check the Star Citizen YouTube channel for all of these. There was about seven or eight, or maybe even nine in, in total, all worth watching. Also, this week we had a clean shot post regarding the controversy within the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. And finally, Bug Smashers episode 37 is available. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching and thank you to our subscribers. Plus, a massive thank you to our patrons as you make this possible. If you like what we do and want to help us make it better, follow the link in the description to our Patreon page to learn more.